the archangels. Yeah. Um, about ultraviolet, about cell metabolism, about menopause. What, what is that? I'll say too much. Go ahead. No, it, it, to really fly is the point. If you were clairvoyant and you looked at the arc angle of the projected plasma of a plasma body about to project, it looked like wings, literally, the two ends of the heart, the arc angle, the archon, that whole story. Um, so it's really true that your plasma body's final yearning is to achieve distribution. Very simple. That's why ancestors get stuck in the land. They didn't find a fractal enough place to become projective electrically. And that's sort of advanced physics. But we, we want to go back here a little bit for Richard. Um, we, we started this by saying the cell takes in food. Very simple. The food are relatively long waves. If you do biophysics, subcellular mechanics, you find out that the wavelengths of the proteins of food, the cell eventually converts into a shorter wave shorter way. The steps are called the venous line dry, ty, triphosphate. You can actually measure this. Like you can measure Kundalini in that microwave. Long story. But anyway, the cell takes the wavelengths and makes them shorter and shorter, refining until finally the climax of cell metabolism is where the food goes up a caduceus cascade into shorter bond length and produces the final product of the cell, which is high quality ultraviolet light, the blue fire the blue flame. This is like the climax of cell metabolism, just like it's the climax of your organism, actually. The adenosine triphosphate is the step function of the caduceus. Another way of saying it is that every time the cell needs to store and retrieve energy, it does it in a whole number of units of dollar bills, I mean wavelengths. And uh, so when you spectrum analyze for adenosine triphosphate on the spine, you can measure Kundalini. You can replace every hospital scanner in 3D because you map the three-dimensional geometry of cellular metabolism, Bob Gratch, microwave emission scanning technologies, etc. So the physics of Kundalini is very clear, but that's another story. So the cell has now got this great ultraviolet light. It's sex juice. What's it going to do? I got this cool stuff, but it's too hot to handle. Playboy magazine 101, you know, too hot to handle. So, the high quality ultraviolet light has got to go somewhere. Now, if the cell has gotten stuck and is not sociable with its neighbors, it will then become spherical and the membrane becomes harder and the ultraviolet is stuck inside. That is the way cancer is triggered, the premature, because the ultraviolet goes to cell center and triggers replication, because that's how replication is fired. Yes, yes, dear. Yeah, but, I mean, would you say that the young teenage girl who didn't have dance and music is selfish because she wanted to have a baby? That's right, yeah. I wouldn't pick on the little girl. I'd try to help her, you know. <laughs> Same thing with the ca cancer cell. It's not evil. It just didn't learn how to share very good, so it didn't get to have much fun. <laughs> That's right. Yes, shareability. Yes, good. So uh, the, uh, the plan B is if the cell is is egg-shaped by golden ratio, ideally, its plasma ultraviolet is projected, and then it's distributed to its neighbors. And during foreplay, tantra, and kundalini, the ultraviolet juice can gather at the tailbone. And if the tailbone, and this is our, we might as well have that discussion, this is the biology of kundalini 101, the Bentoff conversation, the biomechanics of kundalini, and this is my original expertise in Bentoff, was my mentor. Um, 
the biomechanics of Kundalini is that the tailbone becomes a sucker. <laughs> As we joke, the Scorpios love this conversation because we don't apologize for sting. We enjoy it. I'm a double Scorpio. My partner Valerie's a Scorpio. We can enjoy this conversation. We hope you enjoy sting. So the tailbone is a stinger. And during Kundalini, the organ Kundabuffer is a um, the organ Kundabuffer is a device which regulates the uncurling of the tailbone. And as the tailbone uncurls which is related to the pelvic tilt. You do this and then this and your spine liquid pumps, it is now clinically impossible to be depressed if your spine liquid is pumping. Sacrocranial Physics 101, Upledger Institute. So the tailbone is now got a plug in it called the Kundabuffer, <laughs> you know? And if you get that blooming plug unstuck from your tailbone, do it gently because it could explode. <laughs> But if you gently release the plug in your tailbone, your tailbone starts to suck. And the reason it sucks is because of the low frequencies of the heart, heart rate variability, which is your breath, form a caduceus called the sacrocranial tidal rhythms, which are measurable in the sacrocranial pump. And you can feel them. They're lower than your breath. And so that's called a peristalsic pump. And if, you're, if your spine liquid harmonics the long tidal rhythms, as they're called, are in phase, then your spine can suck. And it sucks up that ultraviolet, along with the plasm, up the spine. And actually, it can suck the haploid DNA, sperm, minus the uh, prostatic liquid, can also go up the spine. And you have an explosion of growth in the high brain and the top of your head gets pointed, as did mine and other friends. And you uh, get, a, a, a Bentoff is here showing that there is an amperage that flows around this donut. Remember we talked about the two halves of the brain is a donut just minutes ago? So that amperage that flows fires up the homunculus, which is a map of the whole body on the brain surface, and you feel like lightning is going up your tailbone. Remember, this is all, we're talking about how ultraviolet is plumbed. This is the plumber's answer to your question, okay? So the ultraviolet plumbing has, has, has shot the tube, and this amperage flows, creating this circuit, and then there's a focus of a phonon wave at the pineal pituitary, the rider in the saddle, and the ventricle horns, liquid, are triggered sonically and they ring, and that's called getting horny, if you know Playboy magazine. And it, it, it contains sexual juices, actually. It's true, and it's why Moses and Lucifer have horns, actually. It indicates the completion of the Kundalini circuit. And it's why the horns of an animal are so critical to its ventricle antenna function. And there's all kinds of microwave fun stuff happening here. So, yes? So then, are you, I don't know much about meditation, meditation on the bottom end of my spine using violet color to let go of this Kundalini and ecstasy? Yes, um, the violet could be relevant, but I mean, tomorrow we're going through a whole series of hygiene suggestions involving live food, raw food, and yoga, and sacred gymnastics, and, and movement, and being in highly charged environments where your body gets more fractal. But then eventually you learn the actual switch movements of breath and spine and pelvic tilt, all of which help that pump to go. I, I would strongly encourage people from personal experience, I say, do this gently. <laughs> because it is one of the most common ways to enter the insane asylum as well. <laughs> yes? Uh, would you call, um, that, well, there's a whole conversation about proof that the Catholic Church is evil is you can measure the uh, soil compaction next to the steeple. So, you know, not only do they put the microwave towers in all church steeples in Italy, but uh, you, even before they did that, you could measure the soil depth next to the steeple because it's the wrong kind of capacitor, actually. Whereas the kind of capacitor that works looks like an onion, the eastern churches. So, it, now, if you take those steeples and you put them in an array that makes a bigger body, you've got a chance. But generally, most church steeples, you can prove.